Okay, welcome back everybody. This is the fourth, I believe, and the final video for topic two, data transmission. Here we're going to be looking at symmetric and asymmetric encryption. We're also be going to be covering um, check digits because we didn't get a chance last time. So what have we learned so far in topic two? We've looked at data packets and um, how we can break up data before we transmit it. We've looked at the structure of a data packet, headers, payloads, and trailers. We've looked at packet switching moving it from one router to another. We've looked at different methods of transmitting data. You can remember serial, parallel, simplex, half duplex and full duplex. We've looked at um, USB, universal serial bus. In the last video we looked at various error checking methods including parity checks, checksum, error checking and ARQs. Um, but now we're going to move on as I say to encryption. But what is encryption? Well encryption is a process of encoding data or a message so that it cannot be understood by anybody other than the intended recipi recipient, the receiver. So we're going to sort of um, turn, our, turn our text, turn our message into some kind of code to protect it. So in computer processing, encryption means that data can be stored and transmitted securely by the sending computer to the receiving computer. The data or message is encrypted using an encryption algorithm the opposite of encryption is decryption. Okay, well, here we go. So why do we need encryption? Most, uh, most um, communications sent via the internet are encrypted in some way. I mean, for example, purchases made online are encrypted to try and prevent theft um, of your credit card details. Tools enable a user to encrypt a document, such as a spreadsheet, before sending it to a colleague via the internet, so people can't um, interpret it, download it, and look at it. Also, things like um, satellite television, Netflix, are encrypted to prevent users who do not subscribe to those particular channels from watching those particular shows. A good example is um, pay-per-view sports as well. If you want to watch something, you've got to pay for it um, before you can actually watch it. Well, we start off with, um, I've got an example here, a picture here. We've got some plain text. Um, that we don't want anybody else to see other than the, re the recipient. So we put it through an encryption algorithm, we encrypt it basically, and turn it into what they call ciphertext. Then before the user receives it, it can be decrypted, and we've got keys to, as examples here to show you that it's we're locking it and then we're unlocking it. So we turn it from plain text to ciphertext and then back into plain text. There are two types mentioned in, in this syllabus, in the IGCSE, there are two types of encryption methods. First of all, we've got symmetric encryption. All this means is it's one key. One key to encrypt it and one key to decrypt it. Okay, so in symmetric key encryption, the message is encrypted by using um, a key and the same key is used to decrypt the message, which makes it easy to use but less secure. It also requires a safe method to transfer the key from one party or one person to another. Communicating parties must have the same key in order to achieve secure communications. The other method, perhaps a more secure method, is something called asymmetric encryption. So in today's digital world there, are, there has been a need to develop a different approach to encryption, something more secure. This is called asymmetric encryption. With this approach, a pair of linked keys is used and consists of a public key used to encrypt the data and a private key used to decrypt the data. Both keys are different, but they're related. The public key is available to anyone who wishes to send a message. On the other hand, the private key is kept at a secure place by the owner of the public key. Okay? So the private key is kept safe and only that person with a private key can decrypt the message. Differences between symmetric key encryption and asymmetric key encryption. Um, there may be exam questions whereby they're asking you to, to talk about the difference. Of course the main difference is symmetric uses a single key. A public key which um, is used to both decrypt and encrypt the message. Whereas asymmetric uses two keys, a public key and a private key. One to encrypt and one to decrypt. The size of ciphertext is smaller or the same size 
than the original plain text in symmetric, whereas the in um, in asymmetric the cipher text is the same size or it's larger than the original plain text. Um, the encryption method is fast um, compared with um, a slow speed for asymmetric key encryption. Um, for symmetric key encryption, it's generally used for large amounts of data, large amounts of information. Whereas for asymmetric, it's used on small amounts of data, even things like passwords. Okay, it only provides confidentiality, whereas asymmetric provides confidentiality, authenticity, and the validation of that. We've got some examples here of different kinds of um, symmetric key encryption methods and here for asymmetric encryption methods. And then finally, in symmetric key encryption, resource utilization is low compared with asymmetric. Yep, obviously it's, it uses um, resource utilization is higher for asymmetric encryption. And that's it. Okay, we didn't mention this last time because we were running out of time, but I just want to talk about the final um, method for error checking and that is check digits okay it's different from the others in terms of its use for it's used with barcodes and it's used for the mistyping or the, the misscanning of a barcode um, it's they can usually detect the following types of errors okay so an incorrect digit has been entered for example 5327 rather than 5307 okay it's also used to um, identify um, transposition errors where two numbers maybe have changed order for example 5037 instead of 5307 it might detect um, omitted or extra digits for example we've lost a digit here and we've gained a digit here but it also um, can detect phonetic errors for example 13 has been en entered rather than 30 misheard maybe the um, the number so as I mentioned before it is used for barcodes barcodes on products and it's used for things such as international standard um, book numbers or ISBN numbers and vehicle identification numbers these are unique numbers to the book to the product to to a car okay there are a number of different methods but the book mentions two two common methods and that's ISBN 13 and uh, modular 13 and you've got an example of a barcode here an ISBN barcode okay so I'm going to talk about one of these methods now and how we calculate the check digit okay so we've got a, an ISBN 13 number here and we need to find out what we're going to do what we're going to use as our check digit so we've been given a calculation now I'm hoping on the exam paper if this comes up a question like this comes up it gives you sort of what you need to do the calculation and all you need to do is, is put these numbers in in the correct way to get um, to get your answer to get the to get the check digit so first of all we're gonna at step one we're gonna add the values for all the even number positions and these have been labeled here um, 12 10 8 um, 6 4 2 and they've been put in there to give us a total of 27 now well then times that by 3 this is in the calculation we times it by 3 to get 81 and then we repeat this but with the odd number positions so 513997 nine, yeah in here to get 34 we add them both together 115 okay and here's the important bit step 5 if the answer from step 4 yeah ends in a zero then we're going to put that zero into our check digit okay into our into our number one position there the last number okay otherwise we're going to subtract the number from step four from the next highest multiple of 10 well there we go so if that's 115 we've got there the next highest multiple of 10 will be 120 we take that away from that and we get number five and that will go yeah in that position there Okay, so that's basically a, a check digit. Um, it's used to um, to check for errors in, in in the digits. It's a little bit like checksum in terms of it, it uses a calculation. Um, and if it's on an exam paper, I'm hoping it will give you a um, a calculation formula to work through these digits. Okay, 
Um, that is it for topic two, um, data transmission. So um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've 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 gained a lot from it. Please um, subscribe and join me next time for when we start um, topic three. Thank you very much indeed. Bye for now.